the uh, COVID emergency has uh, uh, pointed out uh, uh, very uh, very clearly that uh, uh, the, uh, the impact of, of an epidemic is an impact that is wide because the resilience of the city is, a, is, a, is an infrastructural resilience that is uh, composed by hard components, so uh, hard infrastructures like uh, uh, the mobility, like telecommunication, like energy, but is also a soft, uh, there is a, a, also a soft infrastructure that is, uh, are all the uh, rules that govern in this infrastructure in the city. But another important part of the city is the intangible infrastructure. So all these aspects and all those aspects are related to the behavior of people and related to all the intangible factors that might uh, challenge and that might uh, impede the uh, sustainability and the resilience of the city. And so the uh, the impact of COVID is not only an economic impact, but it's also an impact on uh, uh, the, uh, the, the texture of the city under the social point of view and also under the environmental point of view. And for this, uh, Professor Vine is, is a, a renewed expert of uh, uh, the so-called co-benefits and is an expert and he is he's, he's studying in a, in a very extensive and interesting way uh, the impact of uh, the uh, COVID emergency on the uh, behavior and on the, uh, all, those, all those social aspects that are involving the, uh, the sustainability of the city. So the first question that uh, I would like to, to pose to, to Paolo is uh, uh, according according to to your experience and according to your research, uh, which is the which uh, which was the the impact that uh, the coronavirus uh, outbreak had on uh, all this all the social and intangible aspects in uh, in the city. So, which is the impact on the population under the point of view of uh, the social resilience? Okay, thank you. Um, I will try to share my screen. I hope I will be successful. Um, yeah. Yeah, can you see the slides? Yes, yes. you can. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Good. Thank you. So uh, I apologize for, because some slides are in Italian, but never mind, I will translate them. Um, my presentation, which is very short, uh, uh, is about uh, social inequalities uh, in relation to COVID-19. And I have a few data to show, um, also from Italy. Uh, so first of all, uh, from England, uh, uh, we know from the Office of National Statistics uh, that uh, uh, COVID mortality is uh, unevenly distributed uh, according to occupation. And in general, uh, professional occupations have uh, lower uh, mortality, whereas uh, occupations that uh, entail contact with the public or um, occupations uh, characterized by, by a low education, in general, low socioeconomic position, uh, are associated with uh, much higher mortality. Uh, you can see the, the, the huge difference between uh, the bar for uh, uh, low-skilled uh, elementary occupations and uh, professional occupations. Uh, we have some data from Italy uh, and specifically from uh, uh, Piedmont, which is my region. Um, uh, I've been working with uh, the task force in Piedmont that uh, addressed and uh, tackled uh, the, the epidemic. Uh, these data refer to the mortality rates uh, in Piedmont uh, comparing uh, different periods, uh, and in particular different uh, uh, winter periods or early spring periods uh, from uh, 2017 to 2020, um, according to uh, educational uh, level. Uh, so the, the upper um, line uh, refers to uh, the elementary school, uh, the, the lowest uh, um, uh, educational level, and you see that uh, there are some spikes, uh, uh, some increases uh, corresponding to 
usually the months of December or January, uh, and this is the H1N1, uh, the, the usual influenza epidemic. But if we look at the months of uh, March and April in 2020, uh, there is a, a, a higher spike, uh, which uh, uh, is uh, uh, attributable to COVID. Uh, this is uh, the population uh, aged uh, more than, uh, um, than 65. Uh, so the message here is that uh, the lower social groups uh, are more disadvantaged, so social groups are more affected by uh, COVID mortality. And this is the same message uh, uh, referring to an index of uh, relative inequality, so I will not uh, uh, go into details. And also we have uh, uh, some kind of sparse data uh, yet on uh, um, also to, 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 to access uh, to different uh, benefits uh, uh, or in this case educational tools. Uh, this comes from uh, uh, the UK, uh, in fact from The Economist, uh, and uh, uh, shows that um, uh, people with lower uh, socioeconomic uh, um, status, uh, which are in green, uh, um, um, have uh, lower access to online classes uh, compared to uh, private schools, um, whereas uh, they have uh, greater access uh, to uh, home uh, learning packs, uh, which are less effective uh, for, for learning. So there are inequalities uh, in access to education, which uh, explain part of the, uh, the impact that COVID will have uh, uh, in the short uh, uh, and long run. So what are the potential uh, biological explanations? Uh, sorry for the Italian, this is the only uh, Italian uh, slide. So first, uh, people with uh, the disadvantaged uh, social class uh, are more exposed to risk factors uh, for a more severe prognosis like obesity, diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease. Uh, as we have seen, they have uh, um, uh, jobs uh, with uh, uh, higher risk uh, um, and, and the possibility of uh, uh, smart working are uh, uh, less uh, widespread than for other professions. Um, then these people uh, in, in low socioeconomic uh, position are also more frequently exposed to infectious agents. Uh, we have produced uh, uh, a couple of papers uh, in the life path uh, 2020 project and uh, also they are more exposed to uh, psychosocial stress um, which can be measured uh, uh, in several ways with biomarkers like uh, inflammatory state uh, um, allostatic load and age acceleration so i, I would like now uh, to show a few slides about uh, the biological um, underlying uh, mechanisms uh, uh, that can explain why people in low socioeconomic status uh, um, have uh, in general higher mortality. They have, uh, a, a, for all diseases, uh, uh, with uh, very few exceptions, uh, higher rates. Uh, um, so they, they uh, fare uh, poorly uh, in terms of aging uh, and healthy aging. First, uh, um, we have shown in a, in a large uh, Horizon 2020 uh, network uh, that, uh, for example, the allostatic load score is higher in people with lower socioeconomic position. Was it, what is it? Uh, it is uh, a composite uh, score made of uh, markers uh, that explore the, uh, the functionality of different organs in the body, like uh, the heart, uh, the lungs, uh, the, the kidney, but also um, uh, stress uh, uh, through the measurement of cortisol and other markers. In general, inflammation is increased uh, in people with low uh, socioeconomic position, uh, like increase in C-reactive protein, and this may explain why uh, these people are more susceptible to infections and also to poor prognosis uh, uh, once they have been infected. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, there is greater susceptibility, for example, to infection with uh, Epstein-Barr virus. Uh, this is another paper we published from uh, uh, LifePath. Um, and uh, I mentioned uh, epigenetic age acceleration. I show an example a little later. This is a way to uh, study biological acceleration of age uh, 
so uh, quicker aging, more ra ra rapid aging uh, through um, changes in the in DNA, uh, methylation of, of DNA. Uh, I show you an example in a moment. Uh, and we also looked at uh, different uh, inflammatory markers uh, uh, like a transcriptome uh, score for inflammation. For all of these markers, uh, we have uh, uh, a difference between high social groups and low social groups uh, with uh, more disadvantaged uh, groups uh, uh, performing uh, more uh, poorly. So they, they, they tend to have a, a higher levels of uh, each of these markers. Um, well, I, I can skip this because uh, uh, there is not much time. This is an, an example of uh, the impact of the allostatic load that I described uh, before. Um, uh, we have shown that uh, the allostatic load uh, um, is associated with uh, deprivation and uh, low socioeconomic status, but it is also predictive of mortality. So this uh, slide shows that uh, the allostatic load uh, um, is uh, uh, associated with much higher mortality. Uh, if you have a high allostatic load uh, compared to low allostatic load. And it is a, a let's say, a composite, a generic indicator of, uh, of sorry, I had to uh, increase the, the size of the slide. Um, it is a generic uh, indicator, composite indicator of uh, um, psychosocial stress and what is called uh, wear and tear um, on, on the organism. And this is a final slide. Um, I mentioned uh, epigenetic age acceleration. Uh, basically, it is based on the uh, methylation of uh, DNA. That is a, a modulation, epigenetic modulation of uh, the functioning of DNA and of the uh, regulation of, of gene expression. Uh, so we looked at uh, um, uh, age acceleration, which is a, an acceleration of biological age. Uh, that is, uh, the, the, the age of the individual is biologically higher than the chronological age based, uh, or it can be lower, of course, based uh, on methylation of DNA. And what we showed is that uh, uh, we find uh, uh, age acceleration in association with uh, the usual uh, risk factors for disease like smoking, uh, uh, you see BMI and uh, uh, alcohol, uh, physical activity, the, the usual risk factors for chronic disease. But there is also age acceleration with uh, low socioeconomic position independent of the uh, risk factors. Uh, look, for example, at, at the uh, blue uh, bar there uh, for low uh, education compared to high education, and this is one of the different uh, age acceleration markers. But for all of them, uh, the level is higher in low socioeconomic uh, uh, groups. So uh, coming back to COVID, uh, it is clear that uh, the susceptibility of the population is uneven uh, based uh, uh, on risk factors like smoking uh, or BMI, but also on socioeconomic status. And uh, such susceptibility is explained or mediated by um, biomarkers like age acceleration, epigenetic age acceleration, uh, allostatic load, uh, inflammatory markers, and, uh, uh, and also the immune function. I, I think I can stop here and I, I am ready for other questions. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Paolo. This is, uh, you, you showed us a, a very, a set of very interesting results, but the, the, the most, uh, the most relevant according to my, uh, to my view is the fact that uh, you uh, pointed out a set of vulnerabilities that uh, are actually going over uh, the direct impact of, of the coronavirus. So, by example, I was I was very interested in the slide in which you uh, pointed out the vulnerabilities of uh, uh, children from uh, different uh, income in, income bracket families. So, this is something that we also have uh, uh, experienced here in Italy with uh, the uh, the didactic distance. So, with the the, the so-called the, the so uh, the, 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 
the, the school and the lessons made on uh, several web platform and other kind of uh, other kind of uh, uh, mean that actually hitted uh, mostly uh, the persons in the lower income bracket. So one, one uh, a possibility and a question would be that in order to increase the resilience of the society uh, to pandemics in general, one should invest in reducing the uh, the inequalities and working towards a more inclusive uh, society not only under the sanitary point of view but also under the uh, social and economic point of view yeah uh, yes well i would say that uh, uh, social economic uh, status uh, is uh, uh, it has been called a risk multiplier because uh, uh, if you belong to a low social economic group uh, not only you tend to have behaviors uh, that increase your risk of disease uh, but also beyond uh, uh, behavioral risk factors uh, you have an increased uh, uh, susceptibility which is related for example to a chronic inflammatory status or uh, as I said, uh, um, epigenetic uh, uh, age acceleration. So uh, there is a um, generic susceptibility to disease uh, which comes before contact with uh, the um, causal agents uh, like uh, uh, the SARS-CoV-2. Uh, uh, then you have a uh, uh, susceptibility to um, uh, more severe effects uh, of the disease itself, uh, so poorer prognosis. Uh, uh, which is pretty clear in the case of COVID, uh, if you belong to a low socioeconomic group. And then uh, you're also more susceptible to the multiple effects of uh, the infection, including uh, educational, uh, well, the increase in the educational gap, uh, and also mental uh, effects. Um, for example, because if you belong to a, a low socioeconomic group, uh, you have a smaller house, uh, the housing is a problem, uh, the house is more crowded, it is more difficult to study, um, and uh, this leads uh, to tensions, uh, as we know, to perhaps a violence uh, uh, and uh, sometimes long-term uh, uh, effects. So for, for this reason, a uh, low socioeconomic status uh, is called a risk multiplier. Very Ah, I, I was muted. It's very, it's very interesting this uh, this point, and I hope that uh, you, I, we, we all imagine that you bring uh, all this experience into into the task force uh, that uh, in which you were involved uh, uh, in the last uh, in the last months. Do you want to to share something, uh, some uh, some lessons that? Uh, you learned uh, during this period in which um, you were part of this uh, very important and relevant uh, working group uh, yes well uh, i think that uh, the the region where i am in uh, piedmont uh, had a situation which was not uh, so different from uh, lombardy that is uh, um, there was a um, lack of uh, um, uh, me medical uh, structures uh, and uh, organization in the, in the territory, uh, uh, whereas uh, hospitals uh, um, have performed uh, relatively well, or I would say well, but there was a lack of uh, uh, preventive action uh, at the local level by um, general practitioners uh, and the preventive services. So we had to, to address uh, um, an epidemic that was more severe than elsewhere, and of course, uh, uh, we are trying to, to take into account also the, the social determinants and social susceptibility. But first of all, we had to set up a system for the monitoring of the, the epidemic and also for contact tracing. And uh, obviously, I, I noticed that uh, contact tracing is, is more difficult in more deprived areas, uh, which are also the, those which are more at risk uh, with a greater um, crowding uh, and so on very interesting we have we have a questions from uh, francesca i su i suggest uh, to uh, move with uh, uh, the second speaker and then to open uh, to open uh, 
the, uh, the discussion with the, uh, the audience and then to wrap up with the, some questions uh, uh, to, both, uh, to both the speakers. It's okay, it's fine. Okay, Francesca, it's, uh, it's fine for you. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, thank you very much. Then, thank you, Paolo, for this, uh, very, this very interesting uh, um, this very interesting presentation. Then I, um, I, I, I can introduce, I'm, I'm glad to, to introduce uh, Dino Pedreschi, which as well as Paolo has been, uh, is part of the task force uh, of uh, settled up by, by the Italian government. And uh, uh, we, uh, I'm, I, I, I would ask to Dino to share with us your thought about uh, your studies on mobility and in particular the impact that uh, the uh, epidemic outbreak had on and uh, on, on the mobility and the impact of the mobility in the outbreak. So it's, it's, a, dub, it's a double role, it's not only, it, it's, it's a double way impact that is uh, quite, uh, quite uh, hard to analyze and we hope that you will show us some, uh, some of the results uh, that uh, uh, your group uh, uh, computed and uh, shared on, uh, on, this, uh, on this topic. So please, Dino. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Angelo, and all for, for the invitation. Uh, very glad to be, to be here to, to share some, some thoughts. Uh, basically, the... the, the you know, my uh, uh, answer to your to your question: What is the, the mutual um, uh, impact between mobility and, and epidemics? Uh, it is something that uh, is rooted on on, uh, on the experience that is also very strong in our in our uh, lab in so big data in general. That mobility, human mobility data that can come from different. Uh, uh, devices. Uh, well, you see in this in this picture, uh, actually visualization of GPS data from uh, from cars, which is one private cars, or uh, data that can come from uh, uh, mobile mobile phone uh, uh, providers uh, that re recall uh, data records, you know, cold data records, or extended data records also when whenever our phones connect to the network for uh, accesses to the internet so all this information can essentially provide very detailed proxies of the uh, human presence and human mobility uh, movements in uh, in uh, at very various uh, uh, geographical scale you know, from from single cities to entire countries of course with different uh, abilities gps data are essentially private transportation by car uh, mobile phone records uh, can simply uh, be applied to any kind of transportation but of course with a with a lower uh, precision and accuracy but they as i said can be really we have been showing in in the in in, uh, in the past uh, decade how uh, important this data is for understanding now casting, monitoring, uh, for instance, uh, well-being. No, I'm, I'm just recalling a study uh, with uh, more than 20 million anonymized users uh, of the Orange Telecom Network uh, in, in France uh, uh, used, uh, where we show that we can proxy with an extremely accurate, uh, uh, let's say, uh, mechanism now casting mechanism the uh, well-being across different dimensions for instance uh, education uh, income or other uh, deprivation indexes in a way that uh, uh, can be directly measured using mobility data and in particular one aspect that can be measured by mobility which is the entropy the diversity of our movements uh, th there are uh, studies like uh, this study uh, that was actually uh, as Luca Pappalardo, our guest today uh, as uh, first author, uh, showing that we can even profile people uh, in, into categories like uh, returner explorers by uh, something that emerged from uh, uh, the pattern of individual mobility 
by comparing the, the overall mobility of a person with the routinary, with the, uh, the, 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 the routine mo mobility uh, that we all uh, every, every day have, uh, at least in normal times, between our home and our work or study place. And this is a, uh, why is this important uh, uh, in, in general? Uh, it, it is not only the fact that mobility can help us understand better the, the behavior of population according to, to movement, but this can also be uh, a, a way to understand how diffusive can be our societies. We, we, in that paper, that is a paper of more than uh, I think five years ago, we showed that the more we have explorers, so people with a very diversified mobility uh, into a population, the the higher will be the 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 the, the, the speed at which uh, spreading spreading of uh, everything, like spreading of opinions, but also spreading of virus, can can be quick in in a population. And uh, given that uh, uh, diversity uh, of of movement, diversity in a population of of uh, of person is together uh, linked with the uh, uh, aspects of well-being and aspects of contagion, uh, this can be clearly understood as a way, a, a way to understand that uh, we can uh, really use mobility for understanding aspects, of course, not everything, but aspects of these uh, very complex societal issues, taking into account that uh, we, uh, of course, there are many I think we lost Dino for connection problems. Angelo, Dino is trying to solve the connection problem. In the meanwhile, can we go ah, okay. with, the, with the question from Francesca Garamonte to Paolo? Yes, yes. So, in, 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 I, sure. Yes, let's Here try with the, with the question. Yeah. So, we use a little bit of, of, of uh, time in, in, in the meanwhile. Paolo, I was curious to understand. You know, the, these type of questions are, of course, extremely interesting. Um, what opportunities are there to link, essentially, uh, uh, to address them based on data that may be at your disposal or at disposal of various researchers uh, um, in Italy and elsewhere? For instance, uh, I really have trouble imagining how one can do statistical analysis increasing the spatial resolution as to be able to construct really solid connections between socioeconomic status uh, uh, and um, epidemiological information. But maybe this could be done on a single patient basis. And I was wondering if uh, you think that at some point you will have access to data on these biomarkers that you were mentioning on specific patients that were hospitalized for COVID, maybe in Piemonte or, or more broadly in Italy. Uh, are there records that you can access so that, for instance, you can know what was the uh, inflammation status or some other, you know, uh, accelerated aging biomarkers for the people that were then uh, hospitalized uh, with the COVID infection? Yeah. Uh, yes, I, I will be very quick because I see that Dino is again uh, um, uh, on the screen. Um, uh, well, uh, it, would, it would require a, a, a long time to answer to your question, but uh, briefly, uh, first uh, we have to distinguish between uh, pre-COVID susceptibility of the individuals, uh, susceptibility to, co to COVID, but before uh, um, the COVID epidemic, uh, and this is based on cohorts. Uh, we, we have a large population cohorts in Europe, uh, about uh, around uh, millions of people, uh, with biomarkers already measured, uh, and we can link this uh, uh, information with uh, individual information on COVID uh, through the COVID uh, registries. Uh, so this this will be done. Uh, we we have uh, put uh, some bids, uh, uh, grant applications to do this, um, and, and it has been done already a little bit in France. Uh, second, uh, the second question is about uh, the impact of biomarkers on prognosis. Uh, 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 how to study the, the hospital popula populations, uh, hospitalized populations. Well, yes, uh, some of the biomarkers are already available, like uh, um, C-reactive protein or inflammatory biomarkers. Uh, others need to be measured, but uh, in several places, a bio 
banks have been set up for COVID patients. And uh, concerning socioeconomic status, uh, uh, well, we have uh, many measurements uh, uh, also at the uh, geographic level, like a deprivation area, uh, and we can use a geolocalization, a georeferencing uh, to connect uh, socioeconomic status to, uh, to individual uh, COVID cases. Uh, uh, so there are many ways to address the problem. It would take some time, but we, we are working on that. Grazie. I was muted. So Dina hope, is back again. You can, can you hear me back again? Yes. So please. Um, yes. I'm. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. I uh, the connection went uh, went down. So, but I managed with another one. So uh, back to to the point. I, I wanted to show you some uh, key insight on the relation between. Uh, mobility measure with origin destination metrics uh, uh, that come data that come from uh, uh, essentially uh, mobile phone operators and in particular this study was done with the uh, wind wind tray oper uh, operator that uh, uh, we have a, a, a long lasting uh, collaboration in, uh, in 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 our lab and uh, uh, essentially this data allows to measure a uh, number of uh, uh, trips estimate the number of trips from any two municipalities in italy uh, during uh, essentially the entire the entire 2020 so before and after and during the the, the national lockdown that started uh, march 11 and also the uh, the, the closure of all uh, non-essential uh, activities on march 23rd, and then the beginning of the uh, releasing the lockdown, the beginning of phase two, which is May 4, 2020. And uh, these are uh, I'm really sorry. So uh, these are, let's say, the, the, the origin destination data that show uh, something before during and and uh, after uh, the, the the lockdown you see that uh, both the, the the diversity of connections uh, this is a visualization of the region destination matrix uh, and and the, the the eight of the picture correspond to the number of uh, of trips you see that there is a essentially from uh, february 18 to march 24 uh, the, there is a, a decrease of the of the size that is uh, roughly of the 60 percent mm -hmm. And you see that even after a week after the, the uh, restart in May 12, uh, there is still quite compressed uh, uh, mobility activity. So what we did uh, in, in, the, in the main study, we put in relation uh, over the temporal scale, the amount of, of flows among uh, Italian municipalities with the, the net reproduction number RT. No, the, the, the famous uh, RT representing the mean number of uh, uh, infection generated by one uh, primary infected uh, individual. Of course, in presence of all the uh, control interventions, the, the uh, non-pharmaceutical interventions, for instance, the lockdown or uh, simply the fact that people wear or don't wear, uh, don't wear masks and, and, and so on. And, and the, corresponding human behavioral adaptation because this is measured of course in 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 retrospective no you, you cannot have it uh, immediately uh, you, you cannot know today what is the uh, net reproduction number you will discover in uh, let's say typically three weeks uh, uh, later when you can uh, uh, somehow do a, a very complex uh, uh, statistical estimation uh, per, um, flow uh, looking at the numbers that correspond actually to uh, actually uh, uh, confirmed cases and and so on and so forth and uh, let, let me go simply to the to the to the images these are uh, all the Italian regions and you see here uh, of course I I don't pretend that you understand immediately all this but you can see the clear emergence of a pattern here the, the blue line the blue line is the mobility uh, number number of uh, of uh, trips of movement uh, the orange line is the rt 
So the, is the, 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 the contagion as estimated in a retrospective way. And the solid uh, orange part of the, of the time series, of the orange time series, is uh, the, the part in time where RT was above the critical threshold of one. Uh, uh, something that we now all uh, know from, uh, from the media is that uh, uh, above one, we are in a, in a dangerous situation because the, uh, the epidemics will uh, start uh, sooner or later in exponential, in exponential growth. If it is below uh, one, uh, we can expect that instead the, the epidemics will will not uh, e explode and actually will eventually die out, die out. And you see immediately from the picture that uh, uh, when uh, the blue line begins to sharply go down in some places uh, at, uh, exactly at uh, March 11, in some places earlier because there was uh, uh, or like in Lombardy or in Emilia Romagna there were uh, red uh, red areas no that were close uh, before uh, slightly before the national lockdown so but but something that is clear everywhere is that uh, whenever uh, there is this synchro synchronous movement down of the orange curve and the blue curve uh, uh, that is really amazingly uh, uh, regular in all uh, the 20 Italian region and, and, and independent provinces. You see that the, 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 the gray line is uh, the, the line of the confirmed cases. So when uh, the, 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 the swab, the tampone, has been certified to be positive, which is, of course, much later uh, compared to the estimated retrospective uh, RT, which is the actual. And, uh, if we focus on just two examples, uh, Lombardy and, and Campania, that are, uh, you know, of course, very different. You see that the numbers in the in the uh, in grey are very different. Uh, Lombardy had uh, more than in, in the in the peak had more than two thousand. Uh, below two hundred. So we are talking about one. Uh, order of magnitude uh, difference, but still the pattern is uh, very, very uh, regular. We reinvented also this name, this EpiMob uh, uh, pattern. That also is interesting because it shows that it's not the case that even when mobility begins to uh, uh, be freed again, and you see this, is a, this study now covers until mid-May. Hmm? Uh, we are, of course, continuing uh, this. Uh, as you see also from the mobility part, it's fairly quick to switch off a country. It takes much longer to, to reopen it. You know, the, 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 the increase now towards uh, the new normal is actually uh, slow, uh, not as quick as uh, when we switch the, the country off. And uh, uh, the, the, uh, the final thing I would like to, to, to give you uh, is to somehow uh, uh, of course, we are talking about correlation, not about causal effect uh, uh, sense. And of course, there are many uh, confounding variables and many possible causal relationships among uh, the different factors that I'm talking about. But uh, one thing I would like to, to, to highlight from our report that shows a little bit uh, that, uh, better some sort of and here in the scatter plot, you see the 20 uh, region uh, in, a, in a scatter plot where you have on the X the delay in mobility reduction. How many days uh, the RT was above one? So there was a uh, dangerous uh, situation for transmissibility of the disease, and uh, the mobility reduction uh, was not yet in place. So the mobility has not decreased at least 20%. This is what we decided the asset threshold in this in this picture mm -hmm. because this come uh, came at different times for the different region not necessarily all together uh, on march 11. Mm -hmm. and on the on the y-axis you have the, the total cases uh, per uh, 100 uh, 100 thousand inhabitants yeah. and you see that there is a clear very clear uh, statistically significant correlation among these two constructed variables and uh, uh, which means that uh, the, the longer it took to, to switch off the mobility, the higher number of cases uh, uh, we, we had uh, 
uh, afterwards in the in the in the region. Mm -hmm. you, you see how uh, somehow certain region in the south perform particularly well due to this. But what is really interesting is the the rightmost part of this uh, of this uh, picture. You see that above the regression line, you see, uh, for instance, Piedmont. Uh, uh, or Lombardy that as uh, Paolo Vine said before probably had uh, uh, also uh, they performed uh, worse than 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 they they could have done uh, essentially probably due to the to the lack of uh, uh, prevention medicine on the territory that was not uh, really uh, able to catch up uh, early with uh, with uh, with the uh, cases tracking and, 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 and the uh, containment of the contagion chains. Of course, uh, uh, Lombardy was also the first. Uh, these were also the first region in, in interested. Uh, other, other regions like Veneto or Tuscany or, or Lazio were, were actually, uh, despite a, a delay, were more affected. They are far below the regression line, meaning that there, there, there is evidence in, in the data that they could uh, could have a better reaction to the to the story. Even notably in the case of Veneto, they were very early affected by the disease as well, but they had a, 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 a sharper and quicker uh, reaction to, to the epidemic. So this is essentially what I wanted to, to bring to the attention. The, the message is that, uh, uh, that we also brought in, in, the, in the task force, uh, among many others, is that Clearly, uh, what will be crucial in, in the next uh, uh, phases of these epidemics and in, in, in future epidemics is actually to be much more resilient uh, uh, in, in, in our uh, effectiveness in uh, uh, tracking and containing early, very early on the, 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 uh, the epidemics. Otherwise, we are compelled to very big and, and uh, let's say, impactful uh, lockdown uh, uh, measurement that are effective, of course. I think this data show that they were very effective, but of course, with with uh, with the social and economic and uh, you know psychological costs. I think I can stop here for now, and I can take uh, other questions. Oh, thank you very much, Dino. It's a, it's very a very interesting presentation, especially regarding the uh, link between uh, the mobility and uh, the evolution of uh, the, epi the epidemic across Italy, and also uh, the confirmation of uh, several, uh, several studies. And this is very important because it's, it is clear that this, the, the uh, rapidity of the intervention in lockdown and other quarantine measures are essential to uh, to reduce uh, the impact of the epidemic, uh, not only under the sanitary, but also under the, the economic point of view. It's also, uh, you, you pointed out uh, it's very clearly the, uh, the topic and the impact uh, that big data have in uh, fighting such kind of emergencies. And also, uh, it, it is important also to stress the, the role of citizens in uh, contributing uh, uh, to uh, to data and and also uh, in uh, in contributing uh, with uh, uh, with their behavior but uh, this uh, uh, the fact that uh, such results and also uh, uh, the possibility to save lives and to uh, preserve the, uh, the the public health there is uh, i see a trade off between uh, uh, the uh, availability of data and uh, the ethic implications about using for the uh, phone data or using uh, the uh, the people people behavior and, and 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 movement and so which is your which is your position regarding the ethics implication of using data for the public good uh, actually well, uh, let me begin with the fact that uh, our part of the task force uh, at the Ministry of uh, Innovation, uh, where both Paolo Vines and myself were involved, uh, did not deal uh, uh, directly with the, the uh, Immuni app, no? with, with, with the idea of developing a contact tracing uh, uh, app for helping 
for, for citizen participation to to tracking uh, the, the 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 epidemic and and possibly be, be more effective in uh, halting uh, new outbreaks and new and new cases but um, certainly we we worked uh, very much on advising the, the government around the fact that uh, uh, i would say two, two key two key observations the first observation is that uh, uh, of course, a citizen can help, can be very effective in in uh, in helping uh, to to track the the disease. Seems that uh, he has uh, still troubles. There are there are two there are two questions. One from Michela, and the other one from Fabio. Oh, Luca, you are in contact with Dino, probably. Yeah, yes, some uh, connection problem. It's time to reconnect. I can, if you want, in the meanwhile, answer to Michela's question because uh, I was. Yeah, why don't you answer, Luca? I think that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, actually, the um, the the mobility delay is. Um, is computed as the number of days in which uh, RT is higher than what the, I think Dino is back. Uh, anyway, it's computed as the number of days in which RT is higher than one before the mobility flows of a region um, that decrease by at least 20%. So in other words, it's computed data drivenly. Uh, you, you, you look at the how many days you have of RT higher than one uh, before a decrease of 20%. And that is your start of, you start counting the delay from that day. And then you, uh, the, the lockdown is when the lockdown actually happened. So for this is done for every region separately, of course, because as we know, uh, for example, the, the date RT was higher than one in Lombardy is before the date uh, RT was higher than one in Campania or, or in other southern regions. So the delays can be like that. Anyway, on the report you can find uh, more. I'm, I'm very, I'm very sorry about the. Uh, I, I don't know. Can you, can you hear me again now? Yes, mm -hmm. we can. I'm, I'm sorry about this, uh, the, this issue here. But essentially, to, to conclude my, my point, so I, I was telling that any, any uh, let's say, uh, contact tracing or actually expose your risk up can only work uh, in tandem with a very uh, strong and healthy uh, uh, system that uh, allow for, allows for uh, the I hope you can uh, see my screen. It allows for for a very effective uh, uh, tracking of the cases uh, that, that is actually done by uh, uh, sanitary personnel, general practitioner, uh, and uh, and uh, contact tracer that are you know people that do this work, and uh, continuity assistance units that are able to assist people at home, and and this is really the key to success. For uh, the, the for what concern uh, the, the, the 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 issues about uh, uh, what uh, we can uh, uh, put in, in in practice to to give uh, uh, somehow to, to put the city, the citizen in the, in the possibility of contributing to tackle uh, uh, an epidemics by helping the sanitary system, I think we can really do uh, uh, much better than we are, we are doing right now. Uh, it, it, we, we were compelled somehow to develop uh, in, in very little time, and not only Italy, I mean, I'm talking about all, all countries in the world, uh, some technology that could uh, be used to involve citizens in a participatory and privacy-preserving way, but this could be done, and this is something that we, we wrote in, in, a, in a kind of manifesto for a personal data, uh, personal data ecosystem that we uh, <laughs> would like to, to begin thinking for, for, for better uh, organize uh, uh, our communities for future pandemics or future uh, waves of this pandemic, which is uh, uh, giving people more power to deal with own data. With, with own personal data, and uh, this can be used in many aspects of uh, of uh, uh, people's life. 
and of course must be tackled with proper measure to not uh, in, even increase the inequalities, the, uh, the social inequalities that uh, Paolo Vinic was talking about in, in his part. But it, it is something really important uh, that if we change the approach at which big data is collected, right? and, and we, we begin thinking that big data is essentially personal data that are collected by personal people that can uh, make sense of it and possibly uh, share uh, in, in the in the format and, and in, in the way uh, it is uh, uh, somehow uh, consented by people and asked by institution. This could be a fantastic way to to be more intelligent in facing uh, complex uh, uh, complex uh, situations like uh, the crisis we are uh, into now. Thank you. I'm really sorry for the. Thank you. Uh, or <laughs> thank you very much uh, dino for uh, for this nice uh, for this nice presentation uh, in the mean in the meanwhile there are there are uh, still uh, uh, questions from the audience okay so we may start uh, uh, a sort of uh, wrap up discussion about uh, uh, some topics uh, uh, about the topics that we uh, uh, we pointed out in this seminar but uh, uh, i would like to to pose a question to uh, to both the speakers regarding uh, what we learned and uh, uh, the perspectives so we had this outbreak and uh, uh, the uh, outcome of the uh, lockdown uh, will have, and the lockdown will have a deep impact on uh, on our society, both uh, and under both under the economic and under the social uh, and social cohesion point of view. But I would I would like to to uh, to have uh, to pose to pose a question to to Paolo regarding uh, uh, the topic of uh, co-benefits co so uh, the uh, several newspapers and in news but also from data it's, it's clear that the lockdown had uh, a sort of positive impact on um, on environment so the pollution was reduced uh, wild uh, and animals uh, are uh, in some sense um, uh, started to uh, to populate again uh, peri-urban areas and so on. So a focus from uh, from your point of view on uh, on this topic will be uh, will be very nice since you have uh, you are uh, uh, you are an expert of, of on this topic, Paolo. Yes. Uh, well, I didn't uh, explain uh, what co-benefits are, so I will do it uh, briefly. Uh, basically, th this uh, term is used in the field of climate change, but it, it has a universal meaning. In the case of climate change, uh, uh, for example, if you tackle uh, a certain, uh, if you do a certain action um, <clears throat> in a certain sector of, of society, you can have uh, benefits uh, both from the point of view of uh, climate change mitigation and from the point of view of uh, human health. For example, uh, traffic is an example. If you reduce uh, uh, cars, uh, you increase uh, um, walking, uh, uh, cycling, the use of public transportation. You have uh, several types of benefits. You, you increase uh, physical activity, you prevent obesity, you prevent uh, diabetes and uh, cardiovascular diseases. You decrease uh, uh, the emissions of greenhouse gases mm, and air pollution in general. Uh, so there are multiple benefits, uh, uh, both for climate change and for uh, um, people's health. Now, what happened uh, during COVID? Well, due to the uh, lockdown, as we have seen from uh, um, Dino's uh, presentation, there has been a, a reduction in uh, uh, mobility and the, also in the use of, of cars and during the lockdown. My concern is that uh, um, uh, people are not using so much public tra transportation now after the 
uh, reopenings uh, uh, because they are afraid of uh, infection or contagion. And uh, so uh, there may be a, um, um, uh, a new uh, boost uh, in, uh, in the use of private cars. And uh, frankly, uh, the future is unpredictable because uh, it is true that we had uh, uh, lower air pollution thanks to the lockdown, but uh, the question is whether this will be maintained and uh, it will be kept uh, in the future. Uh, my, my feeling is that uh, we need a very radical action uh, in the sense of the uh, Green New Deal uh, to keep the advantages of the lockdowns and to, to or possibly to um, extend them um, in, in different fields, which are transportation, uh, uh, dietary habits, uh, uh, energy production, uh, uh, and so on. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Paolo. Yes, it's uh, the, the topic of public transportation is, uh, is an important topic, uh, especially regarding high-density regions like Lombardy, in which uh, Daily, I think that is uh, before before the, the epidemic outbreak, uh, something like one million person were moved, have been moved uh, or were daily moved by all the public transportation. While uh, another uh, another interesting topic, and this uh, uh, I would like the uh, the opinion of um, of Dino. Uh, it's regard, regarding the future and uh, the, the territorial organization of, of mobility of, of people, but also the territorial organization of the health system. So how to be resilient, uh, resilient for the futures. So first, uh, I would like to have Dino and Paolo opinion, but uh, we start we start from Dino. So how, how to, what, what, what can we do for the future? Well, uh, uh, of course, uh, there are m many, many aspects. It's a very, uh, uh, it's a very hard question uh, in such generality. But I can tell that I believe that one of the key issues that we can do uh, for, uh, in particularly for transportation, I think we can uh, uh, empower people to uh, uh, use better uh, a very diversified multimodal. Uh, infrastructure for transportation uh, one thing that it's uh, really doable uh, is to uh, uh, equip uh, i was talking before about this personal data ecosystem right uh, i think it, a tool that it's uh, missing but i think we can develop also developing uh, the, the some of the premises of big data and artificial intelligence toward the proper means we can uh, uh, equip people with a better way to use the transportation uh, in a collaborative way with any kind of cars or with any kind of uh, mean. I mean, I'm not talking only about transportation by private cars, but uh, any, any mix of any, of any mean. I, I think we can do a lot to uh, increase the awareness and the collaboration uh, in, a, in a very, uh, let's say, atomized way. You know, we, we can, we can uh, more and more uh, develop coordination uh, tools that can uh, help uh, people achieve uh, uh, their uh, daily routine in a, in a sustainable and, and an efficient way. And I, I think this is a, a, a perspective that can be exploited much more than, than we were able to do this uh, right now. And this is also connected, Paolo Vinis was saying, with, the, with personal health. Hmm? Because if, if we can develop uh, not only technology, but in general uh, uh, consensus and, and more education about the importance of, for instance, physical activity, uh, healthy lifestyles on uh, on uh, let's say on our on our well-being in, in all senses, uh, this can really be interlinked with uh, uh, profound structural change in our habits. In, in our mobility and, and we can understand that that can be win-win situation that can be good for for ourselves can be good for the environment and can reduce uh, uh, many uh, uh, bad externalities so I, I believe that uh, uh, there is a possibility across uh, new technology that is human centric uh, uh, that is actually uh, really connected with sustainability uh, goals and is designed for that 
together with uh, education and together with uh, uh, intervention by 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 the government uh, to uh, really tackle uh, this issue from uh, from the very beginning uh, which is uh, the, the the lifestyle and the way we organize our daily life and this is very much connected also with uh, with the inequality and, and with uh, being able to uh, make all the, the people at all, at all levels uh, to to enjoy the the benefits of uh, uh, different lifestyles. For me to comment. Um, well, I, I totally agree with Dino, and uh, we we can look at examples of uh, cities that are investing into smart cities and to into systems uh, that. Uh, better uh, coordinate uh, uh, the, the behavior of people, including transportation. Uh, one example is Copenhagen. Uh, another example is Barcelona, where they, they are closing down uh, some uh, areas uh, for pedestrians. Um, and I would also, in, in general, there is a network uh, uh, of cities called uh, C40 that is uh, centered around uh, both climate change and uh, people's health and the quality of life. Uh, increasing green areas, uh, uh, spaces for cycling and, and for pedestrians and so on. Another good example is uh, agriculture and food production. Uh, food is, uh, is becoming uh, key because, uh, for example, um, the agriculture contributes uh, for a share which is between uh, 15 to 25 percent of greenhouse uh, uh, gas emissions. The estimates are still uncertain, but uh, certainly more than 15, uh, due to methane, uh, for example, coming from animal breeding. And uh, um, there are ways to uh, improve uh, agriculture and make uh, smart agriculture uh, based on uh, sensors, on drones, uh, to, to decrease the use of pesticides, uh, to decrease the use of uh, water, the use of land, so it's not only um, an issue of uh, behavioral changes uh, like uh, shifting from uh, too much meat uh, to uh, a greater amount of legumes and vegetables, but it is also, well, obviously uh, the governments have a, a great responsibility in, uh, in, the, in, the, in their policies of prices uh, and taxation uh, to, to uh, promote certain foods uh, and uh, discourage uh, uh, other foods. But uh, apart from that, uh, there is a whole movement of uh, uh, virtuous agriculture uh, based on new technologies like uh, uh, drones, uh, uh, as I said, uh, sensors and uh, uh, artificial intelligence. So uh, there are big opportunities, but these need to be uh, exploited uh, soon. Let me unmute. Okay. Yes, uh, it's, uh, it's very, it, both positions are very, very interesting. <laughs> Another comment from, from Simona says, uh, she says that after the COVID-19 task forces, maybe we may experience uh, this uh, and we extend the task force to a Green Deal task force uh, on uh, topics like sustainability and so on. Uh, there is a comment from Matteo Bowman. So, Matteo, please. No responding. So, it's a, I have a question that, Matteo, please, go ahead. Yes, hi. Uh, yes, uh, um, I want to ask um, a question that, uh, as a right, I, is maybe related with uh, both your presentation. I mean, what um, is? Do you think is it possible, maybe, to um, to study the relation? So, mobility is related with socio-economic indicators. So, maybe regions that are richer uh, in a country, uh, when where people are richer, they move. Uh, uh, the most and uh, so can it be assessed somehow uh, the if and how much the spread of an epidemic is related to this well-being of regions through mobility i don't know if it's uh, I, I was... yeah no i understand it, 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 I, I was uh, very quick on this but i believe there is uh, 
certainly uh, evidence that uh, uh, the, the the entropy of movement of a, of a, of a region of a city or or a, or a region or a province uh, uh, the diversity is connected uh, both with uh, well-being let's say in in many different uh, measured in many different uh, senses on one side and also uh, with the, the diffusion of uh, of everything not not only the diffusion of viruses but also the diffusion of ideas of uh, innovations and uh, th th there is evidence for there is evidence for that no uh, the I, I think that uh, what is uh, striking is that uh, for the spreading of uh, negative externalities like uh, a disease uh, uh, even if uh, it is more probably more probable that the virus will struck a uh, uh, let's say well developed uh, area Lombardy is an example for instance for that in Italy but uh, what uh, unluckily happens is that in that region the most affected the people are not the, the better off but are actually are the 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 the, the people that are uh, more so socially uh, and socially and economically vulnerable and and and, and this is a somehow reflect a kind of striking paradox right uh, the epidemics will strike more the developed areas but in that areas will actually be nasty with the with the weakest part of the society i don't know if i got the point so paolo do do, do you wish to to have to, to reply to matteo yeah i i just have a comment i agree with nino i i'm not sure it is a paradox because uh, at least during the lockdown, there were many categories of workers who couldn't do any work from home, smart work. And in effect, smart work is lasting more than the lockdown after the reopening for several sectors of society, including public services, whereas there were essential activities and whole categories of workers who couldn't work from home. Um, so, well, I, I refer, for example, to, to people working in supermarkets and, uh, and the like. Um, so um, it's not a paradox because I think that uh, these people are, uh, particularly people who, who are in contact with the public uh, in, in shops, in supermarkets, or the uh, policemen uh, and this kind of categories and obviously uh, health workers uh, uh, nurses and physicians these people have been continuously exposed to the virus uh, with uh, almost no interruption and well m usually they belong to a low social class except obviously uh, professionals like uh, doctors but uh, the tendency is that the people who couldn't afford the smart work uh, were in the low social class groups okay so thank you very much for thank this uh, for this uh, very interesting for these two very interesting presentations and uh, this uh, uh, very interesting discussion about uh, about this hot topic in the, in these last months oh uh, there are uh, there is time for probably a short question uh, Otherwise, I, uh, I'm glad to thank both the speakers and, and the audience for, uh, uh, for their time and for uh, contributing to this, uh, to this discussion. So we hope that uh, the, uh, the next webinars will be uh, uh, as, as, as interesting as this one. And uh, I hope that uh, uh, each one of us today has uh, some uh, food for thoughts to uh, to bring home and to start uh, reflecting and working on uh, these interesting topics so thank you uh, thank you luca thank, thank you. you thank you Tino and, and uh, thank you paolo for uh, for your uh, for your time and your availability in uh, in contributing to this webinar so thank you by, uh, Thank you to everybody, and uh, let's see your next webinar again to another uh, to, to the next webinar. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks for the invitation.